are there particular books that you enjoyed that had an impact on you for silly or for profound reasons that you would recommend? You mentioned the vital question. Many, of course. I think in biology, as an example, the vital question is a good one. Anything by Nick Lane, really, mm -hmm. uh, life ascending, I would say, is like a bit more potentially uh, representative as like a summary of a lot of the things he's been uh, talking about. I was very impacted by The Selfish Gene. I thought that was a really good book that helped me understand altruism as an example and where it comes from and just realizing that you know, the selection is on the level of genes was a huge insight for me at the time. And it sort of like cleared up a lot of things for me. What do you think about the the idea that ideas are the organisms, the memes? Yes, yeah, love it, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> are you able to walk around with that notion for a while that, that there is an evolutionary kind of process with ideas as well? There absolutely is. There's memes just like genes and they compete and they live in our brains. It's beautiful. Are we silly humans thinking that we're the organisms? Is it possible that the primary organisms are the ideas? Yeah, I would say like the the ideas kind of live in the software of like our civilization yeah. in the in the minds and so on. We think as humans that the hardware is the fundamental thing. Mm -hmm. I human is a hardware entity. Yeah. But it could be the software, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say like there needs to be some grounding at some point to like a physical reality. Yeah, um, but if we clone an Andre, the software is the thing, like, is this the thing that makes that thing special, right? Yeah, I guess I, you're right. But then cloning might be exceptionally difficult. Like, there might be a deep integration between the software and the hardware mm -hmm. in ways we don't quite yet understand. Well, from the evolution point of view, like, what makes me special is more like the the gang of genes that are riding in my chromosomes, I suppose, right? Like, they're the that replicating unit, I suppose, and no, but that's just prolific. the compute. The thing that makes you special, sure. Well, the reality is, what makes you special is your ability to survive based on the software that runs on the hardware that was built by the genes. Um, so the software yeah. is the thing that makes you survive, not the hardware. Or I guess it's a little it's bit of both. Thing, you know, it's just like a second layer. It's a new second layer that hasn't been there before the brain. They both they both coexist. But there's also layers of the software. I mean, it's it's not <laughs> there, it's a it's a abstraction that's, uh, on top of abstractions. But okay, yeah, self so, so self is Gene uh, and Nick Lane. I would say sometimes uh, books are like not sufficient. I like to reach for textbooks sometimes. Um, I kind of feel like books are for too much of a general consumption sometimes, mm -hmm. and they just kind of like. Uh, they're too high up in the level of abstraction and it's not good enough. Yeah. Uh, so I like textbooks. I like The Cell. I think uh, The Cell was pretty cool. Uh, that's why also I, I like uh, the writing of uh, Nick Lane is because he's pretty willing to step one level down and he doesn't, uh, yeah, he's sort of, he's willing to go there. Uh, but he's also willing to sort of be throughout the stack. So he'll go down to a lot of detail, but then he will uh, come back up. And I think he has a, yeah, basically I really appreciate that. That's why I love college, early college, even high school. Just textbooks on the basics uh, yeah. of computer science, of mathematics, yeah. of, of uh, biology, of chemistry. Yeah. Yes. Those are, they condense down like a, uh, it's sufficiently general that you can understand the, both the philosophy and the details, but yeah. also like you get homework problems and you, you get to play with it as much as you would if you were in yeah. programming stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm also suspicious of textbooks, honestly, because <laughs> as an example in deep learning, uh, there's yes. no like amazing textbooks and the yeah. field is changing very quickly. I imagine the same is true in say, uh, synthetic biology and so on. These books like The Cell are kind of outdated. They're still high level. Like what is the actual real source of truth? It's people in wet labs working with cells, yeah. you know, sequencing genomes and yeah, actually working with working with it. And uh, I don't have that much exposure to that or what that looks like. So I still don't fully, I'm reading through the cell and it's kind of interesting and I'm learning, but it's still not sufficient, I would say, in terms of understanding. Well, it's a clean summarization of the mainstream narrative. Yeah. And, but you have to learn that before you break out. Yeah. At the, towards the cutting edge. Yeah. But what is the actual process of working with these cells and growing them and yeah. incubating them and you know, it's kind of like a massive cooking recipe. So making sure your cells live and proliferate and then you're sequencing them, running experiments and uh, just how that works, I think is kind of like the source of truth of at the end of the day, what's really useful in terms of creating therapies and so on. Yeah, I wonder what in the future AI textbooks will be. Because, you know, there's a, artificial intelligence, a modern approach. I actually haven't read if it's come out, the recent version, the recent, there's been a recent edition. I also saw there's a science of deep learning book. 
I'm waiting for textbooks that are worth recommending, worth reading. It's, yeah. it's, it's tricky because it's like papers and code, code, code. Honestly, I, I find papers are quite good. I especially like the appendix appendix of any paper as well. It's like it's like the most detail you can have. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be cohesive, connected to anything else. You just describe me a very specific yep. way you saw the particular yep. thing. Yeah. Many times papers can be actually quite readable. Not always, but sometimes the introduction and the abstract is readable, even for someone outside of the field. Mm -hmm. uh, not this is not always true, and sometimes I think, unfortunately, scientists use uh, complex terms even when it's not necessary. I think that's harmful. I think yeah. there, there's no reason for that. And papers sometimes are longer than they need to be in this in the parts that don't matter. Yeah, the appendix would be long, but then the paper itself, you know, look at Einstein, make it simple. Yeah, but certainly I've come across papers I would say in say like synthetic biology or something that I thought were quite readable for the abstract and the introduction, and then you're reading the rest of it and you don't fully understand, but you kind of are getting a gist, and I think it's cool.